Do not forget to register your new aerator. Here's your information you need to register it. And it comes with the registration card. Agrofab 48 inch plug aerator. Yes. Set up a nice work area. I use white plastic so that if I drop parts, I won't lose them because I don't want to lose any parts because there are a million parts to this thing. Holy cow. Now I'll get the instructions and I will do them one piece at a time. I'm so excited. You might want to keep Charlie nearby to help hand you tools. Can't do things without our little sidekick now, can we? Page six. There's your three quarters, your nine sixteenths, your half, and your seven sixteenths. And these uh, sockets are the size of those. And this one's the size of that. And we need treats for Charlie to keep him interested. And there's our parts. I have them all laid out on this table now, ready to go. Since this parts list has instructions on the back of it, I went in and I made a copy of it, same size. I'll put it here so I can measure each part as I need it. Okay, I just dumped out all the little hardware. There's a ton of hardware. Don't be intimidated, just take one bite at a time. We can do this. Here's the tools I'm gonna need next so I can figure out which is which, because I'm not good at tools. Step one and step two, assemble. Eight aerator knives, which is this, are very, very sharp, so be careful, extremely sharp. On the outside, of each double spool assembly. This is a double spool assembly. Rotate it to here and see there's a hole there. Your bolts and your nuts that go on them. F, which fits there, and K, which fits there. That's a bolt. This part right here goes against, goes onto the bolt. This bumpy part outwards because see there's a plastic ring in there and that's what locks it. And your machinery is right here, whatever you're bolting. That in like that, turn it, and then look, there's the hole. Hold it up here. And turn it. Get it as tight as you can get it, because there that's good. Now that we have all these assembled, we take this here, split ring it's called, because it's split, and you just push it in on both sides. There's one, and here's two. And do it in all four of your units. Step three and step four. Okay, assemble the wheel bracket, which is this to the middle hole in the shaft, which is this, so that the hub of the bracket, which is that, will face the short end. Oh, see the hole? Goes clear through. Now B is right here. So I'll put B in. So C will go here. And so L, L goes on this one, so right here. And then J will go on to here. So let me get J. Step five. When using your spacers, this guide here says not shown full size. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to measure them. See this? That's 5.29 inches. Excuse me, it's right here. And then we need the unit here and then this unit here. And then at the end is a one inch spacer. These are just one inch. See that? Perfect. Okay, on step five, it wants wonderful assembly. Don't forget to make sure these uh, plastic pieces stay in here because they do like to pop out. So slide it in here. See, it pops right out. Slide it on there. Slide this little puppy down to the end. Then you want your 5.29 inch spacer, which is this. Then you want your other assembly right here. Don't forget to keep these on there. And here it comes. Slide them on there. And then it wants a one inch spacer, which is this cute little one. And then last of all, one of your washers is part number O. Right there. Step six. On step six, I looked at how all this is laid out and I did it here. Here's your two and three H long spacer and then an O-ring, just part O, middle brace, and then another O-ring, and then your 3.9 inch spacer, and then our big old tines, and then after that, it will be the long shaft, which is this, the long spacer that's five and some odd inches, and then another time thing, one inch thing, and your other washer. Let's put all that together now. There's our, this is on the long end of the shaft, okay? There we go. Spacer, now our O-ring. And now this little puppy here, and it has a shape pointing to the middle. See, this is pointing to the middle, so we'll do that. Yeah, because you want them pointing the same way. Then you need another O-ring. 3.9 inch spacer. Which is kind of the most important part of this whole project. Don't forget to keep those plastic rings on there because they do want to slide off. 5.29 inch spacer. Our last one of these tines. Okay, and then it says our one inch long puppy, and then our last O-ring. Okay, the axle is now assembled. Step seven. Okay, I've laid these out in the order that they're gonna be installed. I'm just using the tires to hold it off the ground because I don't like my stuff scratched. This little guy points straight up. We've got our one inch here and our flat washer here, part O. We point this little puppy on. Now I'm gonna put my tire under there just to hold it there. Now they're in order of how it says to put them. Now we put this. We are doing the long side first bolt right in there. There we go. Now we'll put our little nut on here. Have this should be at the same angle as that. Okay, and then we'll do the other side. Seems to be a little bit of play in these, but we'll see. I hope that's normal. Step eight. Now on step eight, I laid these out in the order asked for them in the book. The fat part of the tire goes inside. The big bolt, washer P. It goes through there. And then the other washer P. 
in this nut. It's the same on both sides. So he'll just go on there. The half inch, so look him over here. There. It says not too tight because you want it to spin freely. Might be this one. Other end. Tighter. Tighter. Maybe enough so you can spin it. Not a lot. So I don't know why this is baggy, but I suppose it's supposed to be. Okay, now I'll go do the other side. Step nine and step 10. Okay, now we're on step nine and 10. So we take this, we're gonna hook it into here. That's better. Now the hole's lining up nicely. There is a right and a wrong. Okay, now we're gonna turn this little puppy over so we can screw these on. Remember the bumpy side on the outside. Smooth it together. Okay, let's do something. Thing you pull the trailer with. Okay. Actually, I like to put the collar pin in the top so you can see it to undo it. Just right through that hole. And it holds. Now, your trailer, your lawnmower, whatever you pull with, will go right in here. Okay. Step 11, step 12. Reading instructions. 11 and 12. Okay, so I've laid it out here what the instructions say for looking at what it's supposed to look like. So I've laid all these out here where they're going to go. So you have that, and all those six nuts will go on them underneath. I'm going to do all that right now, and then we'll get to steps 13 and 14. Okay, I'm putting it together. Here's the funny little whiz nut. I'm just screwing those in like that. And then I'll put them in and then you'll see what it's it looks kind of looks kind of bulky to me. These these four do, but I guess that's just what it's gonna look like. Now I'll put those little nuts down there on the bottom. Here's what the bottom looks like after I've got them placed. Now I just have to screw them in tight. See they're like that. So I'll have to get my wrenches and screw all six of those in tight then we'll get on to the next step step 13 step 14 okay i've placed the tray into the four corners where they're going to go and now we need to put the baby bolts and nuts which are these which are number e is the bolt and the nut that's in the same bag as that. We're going to put one in each of three of the four corners just to keep it stable. Okay, I braced the three of the four corners just to kind of keep it holding steady. Now it says rotate the middle brace, which is this box tray. It has holes right there, so basically put them in there. Fasten the tongue with two number Ds and two number Js. Do not tighten until the very end, step 18. Okay, we can do this. So it goes right there, and now I'm gonna put them in there. I can do that for you now. Step 15. We're getting close. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn it. Even though it said just to brace three of the four corners, I had to brace the fourth one because this was just too sloppy. So I brace it, and now it fits fine. I'm gonna screw that on. It took some serious muscle, but that tongue is now on tight. Whee! These are for the four corners. I've got four corners in loose. I'm going to put these in, have them fairly loose, and then we'll move on to the next step. And by the way, I'm putting them, this will come from the outside, and the nuts will be on the inside in case someday way down the road, if the nut falls off, at least it would be in my tray. We are so getting done. We're on number 16 of 18 steps. Step 16 and step 17. Place the lift handle through the slot in the tray 
and fasten the lift handle to the smaller inner hole in the middle wheel bracket using the bolt and nut which you pre-assembled earlier. Fasten the lift handle bar to the larger outer hole in the wheel bracket using the bolt number C, the shoulder spacer U, and a 3 8 inch nylon nut J and tighten both nylon nuts. Okay, we're pushing the handle through here. I'm going to tip this little puppy right back up where we had it before. And then we're going to put this onto that. Okay, there's two holes in this, see here and here, and there's two holes here, one with the temporary and the other one. Let's put that in there, tip that there and get that all the way through. You've got that funny washer in here, number U, because it's an adjustable one somehow. Tighten both nylon nuts. So we'll tighten both these and handle and the shifter will both be in place. So. Okay, I have this and this tight. Uh, I would do it like you do if you're putting tires on a car. Do this a little, that a little, this a little, that a little, so they end up perfect. That's what I did, and I think it really helped. But they're both tight now. Home stretch. Put our cute little rubber handle on. And step 18, and we will be finished. 18, you turn it upright, which we just did. Place the lift handle, locking notch at the front, which we did. You should release it. Now the tray goes down, and that's how you till or you aerate. When you want to drive with the tines up, you pull it this way and it'll plop right in there. It works perfect to me. Now, the tray tighten all the eight bolts in all four corners. You've got two in each corner. We'll tighten all those now. Tighten the two which fasten the middle brace in the tray, which are these two. Let's use it. I think Houston, we've got liftoff. Feet, we never get much rain. My, wet, my ground is fairly wet right now, but the grass is dry. I'm gonna cheat tomorrow. I'm gonna pull it behind my mower. I'm gonna drop the blade, mow my lawn, and aerate all at the same time because the dirt is wet, but the grass is dry. Kind of a cheater way to do it, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Thank you, Charlie, for your help. You're a good little helper. Note, when I got my aerator in the mail, because I bought it at Amazon, came in this fabulous box. I'm gonna measure my aerator and cut it out to fit inside, and I'll do a slit down the middle. So it'll fit right inside of here, and I won't scratch up my pretty orange. See you next time on Granny's Simple Solutions. Bye. Subscribe if you like.